big boy and then his age and everything. Of course, he doesn't want to take it seriously. So the boy requests the teacher and says, could you please go and just check it with your notes? So he went and checked it. He came back. He said, son, then what is the right narration? He says, Sufyan's teacher was a Zubayr, not Abu Zubayr. These are two different people. Zubayr ibn Adi was the teacher of Sufyan. So, Haddasana Sufyan and his Zubayr, not Abu Zubayr. He says, you're right. But how did you know this? He said, I just learned it by sitting in your gatherings here. I memorized it. I learned all of this. That time people realized the value of this boy. So now teachers started paying special attention to him. At the age of 18, he started writing the books of a hadith. And writing books about the narrators of hadith. There is a book called at tarikh Al-Kabir. Most of the people may not even know the name of it. Where he narrates a lot of a hadith. That was the book that he wrote when he was about 18 years old. So anyway, Imam Bukhari, rahmahullah, then he started traveling around the world. He went all around and learned the hadith from all the great muhaddisin of his time. He went to Mecca, Medina. Then he went to Basra, Kufa, Iraq, and all the cities of Iraq. And he kept on traveling around until he made sure that he got the hadith of all the great muhaddisin. After that, Imam Bukhari, rahmahullah, he started teaching hadith. As soon as he took that position of teaching hadith, subhanAllah, everything turned around. What happened? No one likes him anymore. This is an amazing fact. That wherever he goes, no one likes him. He went back to his own hometown. They kicked him out of the town. Officially, they kicked him out of the town. He went and taught in other town. After some time, they kicked him out of that town. He went and started teaching hadith in other town. They kicked him out of that town. Where to go now? He had a relative in one of the small villages. And I'm making it very short because when we, uh, there was a time when we were talking about Sahal Bukhari, we talked in detail about the biography from Imam Bukhari. Rahimahullah. So, this kept on happening with Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, and he has a lot of opposition. The reason of that opposition was wherever he would go and he started teaching hadith, no one wants to learn from anyone else. So all the other people that were teaching there, their classes are empty. So of course, naturally, that thing would come, you know, who is he now? Why is he pulling all of our students away? Why is he taking our position? And in most of the situation was the governor of the town and the leaders of the town. They thought, you know, if he will have these type of gatherings around him all of this time, then he's a dangerous person. And at any time he can take our position also. He has to just tell his students that we don't like this government and governor and it's, it's done. So it was the fear of those people who were sitting in these positions that they may lose it because of the high respect Imam Bukhari rahmahullah has amongst his students. So this was the main reason he would have a position. And subhanAllah, every time, whenever he was opposed and he was asked to leave, his students, by the time he had so much respect in the eyes of the public, that people said, you know, you don't have to leave. We'll deal with it. Don't worry. He said, no. We don't want to create fitna. And I don't want to start a problem for everyone in the town. So, okay, that's fine. This is not the only place. I can go and live somewhere else. So he goes and lives somewhere else. When this thing continued, then he went and he lived in a small village, as I said, for some time. Then he heard that there was another town where the students, of course, after all he's a muhaddis, and people really want to benefit from his knowledge. So they invited him in another town. This was the day after Eid, if I remember correctly. He got on his right, 
He's about to leave and a person approached him and said, we recommend that you don't go there because people are creating fitna over there. And there are a lot of people that are opposing your coming into this town. So it's better that you don't come there now. When he heard this, he was so disappointed. That now, I mean, wherever I go, people are posing. Not only this, that even people who don't know me, they never have seen me. And before I go there, they're opposing me before even talking to me. So he made this dua. Allahumma inna al-arda qad daqat aliyya bima rahabat faqbidni ilayh. Ya Allah, this whole universe is becoming too narrow for me. I have no place. So ya Allah, just take me away. Right there, he is sitting on his horse. He made this dua. Right there, he fell off, fell off the horse. They picked him up, took him into the house, passed away there. He passed away there. Subhanallah, this is the greatest muhaddis of the time. And not only of his time, of greatest muhaddis that we find in the history of Islam. He had to make this dua at the end. Allahumma inna l-arda qaddaqat aliyya bima rahabat. Ya Allah, this whole world is becoming too narrow for me. I'm not accepted anywhere. Faqbid me like, Ya Allah, just take me now. So, this is briefly the biography of Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah. As I said, he wrote many books. One of them is Sahih al-Bukhari, which is a well-known book of hadith. But as much as we know about the book, there is more that we don't know about the book. Normally people know about the book that this is a very authentic book. And I'm sure everyone realizes that this is the highest level when it comes to the book of a hadith. It's in the highest category, the highest level in the book of a hadith. But amazing, everyone wants to start his study of hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. When you have a book that is considered to be the highest level highest category in that field, then that should be the last book that you would study, which means the final book that you would study, because you would start from the beginning, you start learning the topic, you start getting for yourself familiar with the topic, until you keep getting advanced with the uh, science, and you keep on getting higher and higher, until you are at the level where you can understand the higher level books. When it comes to hadith, everyone wants to stand with the highest, they stand with the highest level, Sahih al-Bukhari. People who don't even know how to read, they will read the translation. And because of that, as much as it's a known book, this is, as I said, there is more that we don't know about the book. Muhaddisin, Muhaddisin spent their whole life studying Sahih al-Bukhari. When they became Muhaddisin, after they became Muhaddisin, they spent their whole life studying and learning Sahih al-Bukhari. This is how much this book goes into the depth of the science of hadith. So Bukhari is the highest level of the book of hadith. And to us in understand Bukhari the way it's written, for the purpose that it's written for, and the method that has been used in Sahih al-Bukhari, if a person have not studied other books of hadith, and many other sciences of Sharia will not be able to really understand Sahih al-Bukhari. Inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us some time, we will take some lessons of Sahih al-Bukhari just to understand how he wrote Sahih al-Bukhari. What method he used in writing Sahih al-Bukhari. But anyway, as I said, this is one of his books. Then he wrote many other books. One of them is this book, Al-Adab Al-Mufrat. What is this book, Al-Adab Al-Mufrat? As we know it from the word Adab. That this book is mainly about Adab. How to have respect in our life. This is what the whole book is about. Adab. In everything that 